I'm Dr. Amy Bita. I'm the director of the baccalaureate program here at the School of Nursing. So to get started, you guys have been here probably about a month. So I'm sure you know what FPB stands for. It's the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing at Case Western Reserve University. So we're just going to call it FPB. Otherwise, this ceremony is going to be probably an hour longer. Um, You've completed prepare to care orientation and BLS training. You've had two to three weeks of classes, and now you're starting your clinicals. So next week, you're gonna start seeing real patients, real families, and real illness, and often, but not always, real recoveries. Next week, your chosen profession, which is nursing, starts to really hit home and get very real. This is the, where your college experience starts being very different from your roommates and friends around campus. First, all of your pre-med friends start wondering if they should switch to nursing because they probably won't touch a patient for another six to seven years, <laughs> okay? And at the same time, your friends who are in engineering, future writers, lawyers, and bench scientists are spending their days sitting at a desk or behind a computer or in a lab. Your college experience is completely different. Nursing students who are among the lucky few whose classrooms include the patient, the patient's personal space, their lives, their dreams, their disappointments, and the lives of their families. It is an incredibly unique learning experience and a true privilege. As a result of this privilege, you are required to have a different focus and awareness than your roommates and friends. I know that asking a lot of people who just six months ago were playing high school graduation parties, um, this is a big leap, a leap of faith and a leap in your uh, self-ability. But don't get me wrong, you can still have a lot of fun um, as a college student, and I'm sure you will. But when you put on that uniform, those white scrubs, and use your stethoscope, your stethoscope becomes an extension of yourself, literally. A physician um, developed the stethoscope in 1816 when he felt uncomfortable putting his head on a woman's chest to hear her heartbeat. So out of modesty, he created the first stethoscope, which was actually just a wooden tube. But he wanted to have that personal connection to his patients and their care. The set, uh, stethoscope ceremony is a way to remind you of that personal connection. You need to tread lightly, respectfully, and with purpose in this very unique learning environment. It's also to remind you that part of learning is to learn about yourself and learning to help yourself. Ask questions when you don't understand. Go to your advisor when you have a concern. We, your professors, your clinical instructors, your advisors, we are here to help you to become great nurses that we know you will be. Today is one of the first steps we will take together in that journey. And we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Best of luck, and thank you very much. Now I would like to introduce Professor Lorene Gajkowski, who is instructor and one of the advisors to first year students, who will talk to more about uh, today's ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Beta, and I just wanted to say good afternoon to all of you. Um, I'm pleased to welcome you to the 2018 nursing, nursing Stethoscope Ceremony. I want to share my thoughts on this beautiful ceremony as a meaningful ritual that is now marking a milestone in your life. Ceremonies highlight important points in our lives, and sometimes they're referred to as a rite of passage, where we walk through a space that transforms us. Ceremonies usually include ritual and symbols. So some symbols were chosen here for today's ceremony. And um, if you see in front of me, uh, there is a commemorative plate, plate from Francis Payne Bolton. And that kind of reminds us of our culture in nursing, that part of our nursing culture is history. There's beautiful flowers that symbolize life love and caring. 
a very special Florence Nightingale lamp, and that is a um, replica of the lamp that Florence Nightingale carried in her early work, and it always symbolizes enlightenment and knowledge. And of course, the big symbol today is your own first stethoscope. But the symbols were chosen because they communicate uh, the values of our culture. And as I said, nursing is a culture with basic values and history that unite us in caring. So I ask that you focus on one of the symbols that's presented here and just take a deep breath and kind of take in the beauty of this moment. And I ask you to breathe slowly and allow me to guide you through kind of the three phases of this passage as we refer to rites of passage. First, if you could take a slow inhalation and take in the tranquility of this moment that it's here for all of you. You are in a special and a memorable time in your life. Exhale with gratitude for the life that brought you to this point. As you inhale again, consider the transition process. You've experienced separation from the things that were familiar to you. Now you are in a liminal space, which is new ideas, learning, new practices, and growth. As you exhale, you can think about your openness to growth and new things. And finally, on, if you would um, inhale slowly and focus on your future, anticipate the care and the comfort that you'll have the opportunity to provide soon to your patients. And I ask as you exhale to reflect on your professional aspirations in nursing. So in conclusion, I wanna say that you, your faculty, parents, and friends believe that this moment of transition is worthy of our collective attention. So Francis Payne Bolton, class of 2022, look forward with anticipation to the knowledge, skills, and professional growth just beyond this passageway where you now stand. And I ask you to enjoy the wonderful journey ahead. Thank you. I want to introduce Chester Newen, who is our president of the Undergraduate Nurses Association. All right. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good? Excited? All right. So my name is Chester Nguyen, and I am the Undergraduate Student Nursing Association President. And I want to be first to congratulate you guys for making it thus far. Please give yourself a round of applause. So I remember two years ago when I was in your exact position. I sat in this auditorium, um, seated around 59 other students. Um, three of which were male. But if you take a look around, your class has about 128 students, 16 of which are male. So that's just astronomical, just seeing how, how large this program has grown. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm actually not from around here, and I'm sure a lot of you guys came from all different states. I actually come all the way across the nation over in California. And the biggest difference between California and Ohio is probably the weather, but it's not as bad as you think it is. Um, I came here not knowing if there's going to be anyone from my high school here as well because it's kind of a smaller school, but I came to find out that there's a lot of good people here and you'll make really good friends as well. You'll find people of all different passions no matter how small of a group there is. I don't know if you guys knew this, but nursing is hard. Um, you'll find yourself in class and clinicals a lot longer than all your other friends in different majors. Um, They'll be, they'll, other people in other majors will be complaining about waking up to their 10 a.m. classes and we're already through our first anatomy class, or even our community clinical, or even just our regular clinical. Um, it's always nice to have someone you can count on, someone who's a little older. That's why FPB and USNA have come together and collaborated to create this program called Mentor and Men Mentee Program, where we assign each of you guys with someone who's a little bit older who's been through thing and thing. You can go to them about any problems you have, whether that's with class, studying, with, studying for tests, or just wanting to have someone to talk to. Um, next Friday is when we're going to have a reveal and a little celebration, a little get-together. Um, come out, have some fun, and also meet your mentor. 
but we don't exist just for social events. We also put on webinars where you can meet employees of hospitals, talk to different people about the branches and nursing specialties they've been in. And we also go to state and national convention where we push a resolution about an issue that we found in our local communities and we want to push and have some action with that. But for the stethoscopes, I think for me personally, the stethoscope ceremony is one of the most important um, events that happened in my college career. We receive something that symbolizes preservation of life, recognition of health problems, and perseverance. And I hope you guys can find out that this is very, something very special. Thank you, and I hope you guys best of luck. Good luck. <laughs> now I'd like to invite Dr. Melissa Klein, the Vice President of Patient Care Services, as well as the Chief Nursing Officer of Metro Health. Please give her a round of applause. Hi, everyone. I've already blown my job. I didn't um, forward the slides. <laughs> okay. Um, Dr. Melissa Klein is our guest speaker today. She's the Vice President of Patient Care Services and Chief Nursing Officer at the Metro Health Medical Center. In 2018, she was named Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs, Case Western Reserve University for the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing for the Metro Health Campus. It's a long title. Dr. Klein began her career at Metro Health in 1998 as a clinical nurse in critical care and has held various nursing leadership positions. She was instrumental in Metro Health receiving their third magnet designation in 2015 and has led the strategic planning for nursing the past five years. Recently, she led her team to achieve accreditation with distinction for the new graduate nurse residency program. As CNO, she leads a diverse group of nurses across the system, including an academic medical center, two community hospitals, two ambulatory surgery centers, one freestanding emergency department, and an extensive ambulatory network. Melissa is a recent doctorate of nursing practice graduate, and her project focused on the effects of nurse managers rounding on the patient experience. Melissa's research interests include patient experience, nursing leadership and outcomes, and staff empowerment. Dr. Klein currently serves on the board of directors at LifeBank and the Domestic Violence and Child Advocacy Center, as well as being a board member of the Metro Health Foundation. She is actively involved in the American Organization of Nurse Executives, including state and local chapters, and the American Association of Critical Care Nurses. So please welcome Dr. Melissa Klein. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Bina and Chester, for the wonderful um, introduction. I'm honored to be here today to address you, the class of 2022. It sounds a long ways off, but it's going to go quick for you. I know this will be an exciting journey, and I was in your seat just a few years ago, maybe a little bit longer than Chester, um, 25 to be exact, um, and it's been quite a journey even after graduation. When I was asked to address you, I thought, why me? Was everyone else on vacation? Did they have other commitments? Was I the backup to the backup plan? The more I thought about it, and after having a conversation with a colleague and friend, I thought, why not me? I have a passion for nursing, and I have a lot to say. Every day since I agreed to speak, I've stressed over what profound words could I possibly say to inspire you. What could I say that would stick with you and at some later time have my words pop into your thoughts? Not because I want you to think about me, but because I would like um, something I say today to help you be successful and take excellent care of yourself and your patients. I thought about how my story started, and it probably started similarly to many of yours. I wanted to make a difference in the lives of others. I discovered this great quote by Mandy Hale. To make a difference in someone's life, you don't have to be brilliant, rich, beautiful, or perfect. You just have to care. By beginning nursing school, you're making a lifelong commitment to care. Through your academic journey, you will do this and support the mission of Francis Payne Bolton to cultivate nurses who do this in our local and global communities. You will be empowered to continue the standards of excellence in research, education, and practice that you learn over the next few years. That sounds a bit intimidating, but also pretty motivating. Take it one person and one moment at a time. 
All of them, us here and those that will watch later uh, on the video know you will spend numerous hours in class studying for exams, completing assignments, developing care plans, mapping a patient's disease process, and then many more hours in clinical rotations, as Chester alluded to. Today marks one of the first steps in becoming a nurse. As nurses, you will be joining the ranks of the most trusted profession. According to the most recent Gallup poll, the American public has ranked nurses as the professionals with the highest honesty and ethical standards. This is the 16th year in a row that nurses have been ranked uh, as the highest. Pam Cipriano, president of the American Nurses Association, is quoted as saying, every day, millions of nurses are on the front lines in the fight to improve the health of all Americans. Whether nurses are by the bedside or in the boardroom, we continue to be a trusted resource and a vital part of our nation's healthcare system. This poll reflects the trust the public has in us and will continue to work hard to keep that trust. Congratulations on starting your journey to becoming a part of this elite group. I sometimes uh, think of our founder of nursing, Florence Nightingale, and her notes on nursing to compare what she discovered as best nursing practices to what are best practices today. The basics are pretty much the same and have been built upon with nursing research and the advancement of technology. Nightingale once said, were there none who were discontented with what they have, the world would never reach anything better. Think about that for a moment. With that in mind, be aware that healthcare is an ever-changing field in which the flexibility you will hone through your experiences and education here will be challenged. You will be prepared to meet these challenges by the solid foundation that you build here over the next few years. As we face the challenges like the aging population, decrease in reimbursement, pay for performance, and changes in healthcare policy, you will be on the cutting edge and will be, witness a time in the healthcare industry like no other. Your FPB education will arm you with scientific knowledge, behaviors of care, respect, and professionalism that will be the pillars on which you live and practice. The passion and skills to bring competent, caring, and personalized care that will be instilled in you here will distinguish you from your peers. As students entering the profession of nursing, you will bring with you the most innovative and evidence-based knowledge. Not only will you be learning, but you will be sharing your knowledge in your new environment. Let me share a little bit about my experience. When I was in nursing school, I had a clinical instructor who was the instructor everyone wanted for critical care. This was because he always canceled a clinical day at least once, and the makeup day was always a little sketchy. Was it gonna happen? Was it gonna be a full day? Was it gonna be attending a conference? As a side note, this is probably not the right reason to choose a clinical instructor. Um, and when I selected him, we actually had not one but two clinical days canceled, although I really wish we hadn't. He was the most down-to-earth, supportive, genuine instructor I had during nursing school. It made me want to go into critical care, and I used to think, how hard can it be? Because he made it understandable and easy to learn from him. When I was a new grad, I worked at a long-term care facility for about six months before beginning my career at Metro Health. And I started there on a progressive uh, cardiac care unit, so cardiac telemetry or step-down. The nurses that worked there were a varied group, some newer, some experienced, and some were very experienced. I had some nursing experience, but not much, and definitely not with the open heart patients who were just recently extubated with multiple chest tubes and various other tubes and wires hanging out of them. What a fearful and awakening moment it was when I realized those first few days out of orientation that I was the nurse who needed to explain all of these tubes, drains, new medications, and incision care to patients and their families. In my early practice, I often thought what my wonderful preceptor told me throughout orientation. Never feel comfortable. Always look for something to learn each day or night, as I am sure you realize your shift might actually be at night at 3 a.m. I think that nurses must have a healthy balance of many feelings, which include a little fear. I'm sure you are all feeling a little fear about your next step right now. Uh, but I didn't want to be full of fear at that time. I wanted to be full of knowledge so that I could safely care for my patients. But the more experienced I became, I learned to harness that fear for good. I think to be a strong nurse, we must have a little fear when starting each shift. We never know what the next eight or 12 hours will hold for us, so we have to be prepared. And that little bit of fear keeps our critical uh, thinking skills active. When I talk to new nurses in orientation, because I do meet with them every month, um, at Metro, I often remind them to never be too comfortable. 
I advise them that when they are too comfortable or thinking they're becoming too comfortable, it is, becoming, it is time to challenge themselves. And this could be taking on a new role, uh, moving to a new practice area, preparing for and taking a certification exam, or returning to school. The list is endless, and you probably get the picture. Back to my story. I'd been on the cardiac unit about a year and decided that it was time for a change. I really love the open heart patients, but was getting a little bored when the chest pain rule outs and um, chronic disease patients came in. I realized this wasn't good, and so I put in for a transfer to the surgical ICU. At the time, the SIC was in the bowels of the hospital on the ground floor. It was the unit to work on. Um, it was the open heart straight from the OR, the level one traumas, blood and guts, and saving lives. I was told by my friends on my current floor um, when I told them I was leaving, uh, they told me that I wasn't going to make it. It would be too hard and the nurses there weren't nice to newcomers. But I put on a brave face and transferred anyways. I figured if I didn't try it then, I never would. I was scared to death, but I knew if I could, uh, I knew I could do it if I came in with a positive attitude, asked questions, and accepted and acted upon feedback from the nurses there. Luckily, I was paired with a preceptor who was beyond amazing, even better than the one that I had on, on the first unit. Um, Jason had only been a nurse for a couple years, like me, and he had only been in the surgical ICU for one year, and I was the first orientee that he precepted. I was very fortunate because I was able to prove myself and earn the respect and trust of the tight group there, but it wasn't without the, out the help of him. He really took me under his wing and tried to teach me everything he knew. And if he didn't know the answer, he would find it. It was a rough eight weeks of orientation. Um, I wasn't only just trying to orient the unit, learn all the new personalities, new, learn a whole new um, group of physicians, um, but Jason would give me homework every night um, at the end of the shift, and he would bring me in articles and books and would quiz me on the material over the next couple days. Each day, he would also ask me how I was feeling, not how I was doing, but specifically how I was feeling. I always answered that I was great and ready to go with whatever assignment we had that day. One day I asked him, do I always look sick to you? <laughs> because you always ask me how I feel. I wondered like, gosh, what was going on? And he laughed and said, no, that's not why he asked. He wanted to make sure that I was taking care of myself because he had been in my shoes not that long before. And he wanted to make sure that I was taking care of me so that I could be a nurse um, to my patients because it was physically, emotionally, and demanding. Um, he let me know that I was important as, as important as a patient and I had to take care of myself to provide care and bring my best self each day to work to my patients. So my advice to you is to take care of yourself, your whole self. If you aren't healthy and well, then you can't be all you can be for anyone else, your patients, your family, or your significant other. I learned so many nursing things from Jason from how to really talk with a patient or their loved ones and convey information and comfort during devastating situations. Um, also to a few dressing care tricks, titrating vasopressors, sedation and pain medicine, and handling projectile vomit. I could tell a lot of stories about that. But I really love nursing anyway. <laughs> but the most important thing Jason taught me was to care for myself in order to continue caring for others. Care is what will distinguish you from the other nurses or um, professionals on your floor. Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Fast forward 25 years and here I am, the chief nursing officer at the Metro Health System. The job that I didn't realize was my dream job. I did not set out to be the chief nursing officer. And in fact, there were many times I wondered if I would um, still be at Metro or even be a nurse in the, the next few years, um, those first couple years that I was there. It's my personal and professional goal to touch as many nurses, experienced or new grads, no matter where I meet them. I'm a change agent, a collaborator, a teacher, a mentor, and a leader that encourages and supports our nurses to be the best they can to provide exceptional care to our patients. So why do I share this with you today? Because I'm positive that you will be prepared to be the best nurse you can be and provide exceptional care here at Francis Payne Bolton. I'd like to end with another quote from Florence Nightingale. Let us never consider ourselves as finished nurses. We must be learning all of our lives. Congratulations, good luck, and best wishes as you begin your nursing journey. Thank you.
Melissa, thank you for your wise words. And um, it was wonderful to hear that you've gone from being in this seat here to all the way to what we call the C-suite, and you still have the ability to share the patient experience. So thank you. So this is what you all have been waiting for, right? To get one of these, these really powerful and important instruments. But my charge to you is that you use this in a way that you never forget what comes first, and that's your ears. That your ears and your person give privilege to the human condition. And being in that relationship with another patient and his or her family in the most vulnerable times. So the ear comes first to listen to the powerful story, and the stethoscope comes second and augments what you've heard in that story. So are you ready? We would like to invite this first uh, group. If you can also then remember to grab your name on the back of your chair, and I will do my very, very best to read your name phonetically and properly. We also welcome back Lorraine and Kathy. All of you know Lorraine and Kathy. I hope you do by now, right? Um, and they'll be handing you your stethoscope. All right. We'll probably save the applause till the end. And then um, we will cheer loudly for all of you. All right. So Ellen Adler. Great, so we understand the process here, right? Okay, this is Rich Alan Sayo. I feel like we kind of need music. <laughs> Amy Ahn? Andriana Ashley? Did I say that right? Good. All right. Regan Beyer. All right. Rachel Bernardi. Sarah Bloom. Blake Bato. Isabel Bazaar. Did I do that right? Oh, shoot. First one I missed. I'll get it, I promise, by the end. Brianna Broderick. Alvin Cow. Jackson Carr. Sophia Carino. Jacob Chang. Jay Chang, Angela Cho, Annie Choi, Fei Chow. Oh, there's so many of you. Senna Clark, Aliyah Clements. Harrison Craffy, Karima Cruz Shepherd, Marina Devasta, Kaylee Espelin, Charlie, Charlie Fink, Megan Finnerty. Leah Fireman, Sky Fogel, Annie Franklin, Margaret Gaines, McKenna Gebhardt, Emma Gelloff. Meredith Garrity, 
Mary Godley, Catherine Golden, Brooke Gonzalez, Nancy Gonzalez, Shelly Graff, Dante Greco, Hannah Gullo, Hannah Hahn, Margaret Harrison, Kenzie Hartman, Marcus Harvey, Abigail Haste, Marissa Hilmes, Amber Sue, Yellen Hu, Lisa Huang, Carson Hudson, Alyssa Highland, Lauren Johnson, Ji Yung Jung. Rachel Jung, Chloe Ko, Sarah Kruger, Kaya Kumar, Lillian Kwong, Abby Lawrence, Daniel Lee, Elena Lee, Jasper Lee, Karen Lee, we have a lot of Lees. We have to be super particular about keeping you guys straight. Oh no, here's another one. This is Linda. Linda Lee. You all have to have this memorized. Okay? Oh, Megan Lee. Spelled differently. David Lee. That one's spelled differently though. Just pronounce the same. Emily Lynn. Jesse Lynn. Elena Lloyd. Aaron Lyons. Mary Mao. Zoe Martyr. Emma Milbockler, Emily Milner, Madeline Miltenberger, Michaela Mitterling, Sarah Ng, Christina Pun, Caitlin Park, Jolene Parnell, 
Garrett Pierce. Kaylee Pelican. Sarah Paquino, who worked really hard with me to get that name right. Gabriel Perez. Julia Powers. Claire Pratt. Shelby Ray. Hi. Kayla Reese. Anna Lara Renteria. Justine Rose. Caroline Ross. Catherine Shade. Alexis Shermer. Natalie Cedor. <laughs> Catherine Schmersfeldt. <laughs> Brianna Smith. <laughs> Catherine Smith. I also think we have a lot of Smiths. Let's see. Madison Smith. Emma Joy Stanzak. Hannah Stein Halilovich. I hope I got that one right. Megan Stratton. Jacqueline Toggy. Emily Todd. Oh, Esther Pauline Torres. Isabel Van Huffel. Mm -hmm. Emily Van Prez. Isabel Vagali. Sophie Villamara. Madison Weldon. Alec Winpenny. Chase Witty. Harry Wong, Bonnie Wu, Hannah Shu, Aaron Yen, Phoebe Yoon. Jody Zhang, Jeffrey Zhao, Michelle Zhang, Jessica Zhu, and last but certainly not least, Nicole Zimmer. This is a wonderful time. It's fabulous.
So we are so excited for all of you, and we are just beaming with the fact that we have so many of you for which to learn about and to discover and to hear your stories as well. So I think at this point, we have closing remarks, perhaps. You have Amy. Amy, Dr. Beat is coming back to you. Thanks, all of you. So the big part is done. Before we recite the Nightingale Pledge, I have one announcement. Um, after the ceremony, there will be reception in the first floor lounge of the nursing school. But please leave quietly and quickly because there's an event going on out here with uh, another department and school. If you don't like the color of your stethoscope, you can exchange it at the reception with someone, okay? That usually is a, a big deal. Um, the uh, reception is an ice cream social, courtesy of Edwin Mays and the first year experience group across campus. So if you ever see Edwin, please thank him. Um, he's always been very um, generous with our uh, freshman nursing students. So now I'd like you to stand and we're gonna recite uh, the Nightingale Pledge. Oh, I'm really bad at slides, did you notice that? Okay, so you can just repeat with me. I solemnly promise before all present to live my life honorably and morally and to practice my nursing profession faithfully. I will never intentionally harm anyone in my care and will work hard to practice nursing safely. I will never take or acknowledge administer any harmful drug or therapy. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standards of my profession. By active engagement, a commitment to caring, continuing education and mentorship of new nurses and nursing students. I will keep all health and personal information, patients and families confidential as I practice my calling. And I will work collaboratively and respectfully with all health care providers and devote myself to the welfare of those in my care. You don't have to say this part. <laughs> Good luck and best wishes. And if you ever have any concerns or questions, please uh, feel free to contact me, uh, Professor Capper, who's in uh, NLN this weekend, or uh, one of your instructors. It doesn't matter. We're always here to help you out. Okay? Give yourself another big round of applause.